small and mighty Neville intensifying in the Indian Ocean. ATNS is now Cyclone Neville. As you can see, we've got this as a Category 1 equivalent uh, cyclone on the Suffer Simpson scale at 17.9 degrees south and 106.9 degrees east. As of 9 a.m. Christmas Islands time, March 21st, 2024, with winds of, of 80 miles an hour, that's 130 kilometers an hour in one minute winds, central pressure of 982 millibars or exactly 29 inches of mercury, Moving to the west at 9 miles an hour, 14 kilometers an hour, and unsurprisingly, this system remains at 14 points on our Tropical Cyclone Operation Scale, or TCOS for short. This is at 10 a.m. Uh, local time in Perth, 9 a.m. Christmas Island, 2 a.m. UTC. This is a Category 1 system on the Saffir Simpson Scale, Category 3 on the Australian Scale, and it still has room to intensify as it will and it will take advantage of the warm sea surface temperatures under the limited time it has before the sea surface temperatures will drop and the system uh, will start to weaken. So once again, uh, TCOS unclassified on the left there. This system remains 511 miles away from Christmas Island, 545 from Edsmouth, 573 from Coral Bay, 774 from the Cocos Islands, and 1118 miles away from Perth, the capital of Western Australia. In kilometres, that is 822 away from Christmas Island, 877 from Exmouth, 922 from Coral Bay, 1246 from the Cocos Islands, and 1800 from Perth. So the wind fields of the system remain the biggest at uh, southeast and southwest, 60 nautical miles, the next biggest being the northwest, at 50 nautical miles and 40 nautical miles being the smallest quadrant to the northeast. Cyclone Neville is a newly named category one equivalent tropical cyclone headed westwards away from any land areas. Uh, so this system is a category three on the Australian scale and it is forecast to intensify as it continues to traverse westwards, peaking as a category two equivalent system on the Saffir Simpson scale before weakening as it encounters cooler sea surface temperatures. Once again, Cyclone Neville is a newly named Category 1 equivalent tropical cyclone headed westwards away from any land areas. This system is a Category 3 on the Australian scale and it is forecast to intensify as it continues to traverse westwards, peaking as a Category 2 equivalent system on the Saffir Simpson scale before weakening as it encounters cooler sea surface temperatures. With our uh, forecast will be coming up in just a moment here. Here we go. So as you can see, as it will continue to traverse westwards, it will continue to intensify. You can see the wind speed on the left there, it becoming a category two equivalent as it does so, peaking at 110 miles an hour before it starts to encounter cooler sea surface temperatures and weaken by as it does so. By 18 Zulu on the 25th of March, it should reach speeds, uh, wind speeds, I just say, of 40 miles an hour. The primary hazards associated with this system are rip currents. So as the system continues to move away from land, modest rip currents are possible along the coastlines of Western Australia, Christmas Island, and the Cocos Islands, which can lead to significant waves in beach areas. So residents are recommended to follow official advice on west-facing shores regarding rip currents. So I'll say that again, the primary hazard associated with Cyclone Neville is rip currents. As this system continues to move away from land, modest rip currents are possible along the coastlines of Western Australia, Christmas Island and the Cocos Islands, which can lead to significant waves in beach areas. So once again, residents are recommended to follow their official uh, guides. Here's the latest cone from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. As you can see, this, this basically follows the animation we, we showed off uh, beforehand. And when it comes to uh, comparisons against the models, SATCON and ADT lagging behind with 65 miles an hour. And we are pretty much in agreement with ATCF, the JTWC and AMSU at 80 miles per hour. 
So when it comes to the latest GFS model run, the southern side of the system is the side of the storm that has the strongest amount of wind fields. This system will continue to curve southwards before eventually reaching southwards, becoming extratropical, curving eastwards and merging with that weather front right about there. So as we watch this video loop once again, this wind fields in the system also get quite big on the southern side as well. So that's the side of the system to watch out for. Once again, this system is no threat to land at all. So it will harmlessly move out to sea before becoming extratropical and merging with that front. When it comes to rainfall totals, this system is also not expected to produce that much in terms of rainfall. There you can just about see a line of yellow in that track as well. Uh, once again, the system will become extratropical, stop producing rainfall for a little bit, and then start to produce a little bit more as it traverses southeast, uh, missing any land area. And thank you very much for that, Nathan, to telling us that no rain will fall on any coastal areas at all. Basically, this system is no threat to land whatsoever. So that is the GFS model run imagery provided to me by Nathan. When it comes to sea surface temperatures, this system hasn't really got a lot of time left, but it will get there. It's expected to be a category two on the Saffir Simpson scale uh, before as it traverses westwards where sea surface temperatures will fall off a cliff. Surface plots don't really have that much to go on. The closest one there is Exmouth, which doesn't really help matters worse because it's at least over 500 miles away from the center of this system. Multimodal diagnostics take the system up to above 80 knots, which I believe is about about in category two status, which is what is in mind with the forecast. Partially due to deep layer shear beginning a massive rise, sea surface temperatures falling and mid-level relative humidity also being on the decline. And when it comes to the satellite imagery, you can see, I believe the system is trying to form an eye, but I'm not sure it's getting very far with it right about there. Uh, once again, the system is headed westwards away from any land areas. And it will continue to do so, not be any threat to land at all. Uh, it's a very low score on T-Coast right about now as well, remaining unclassified with 14 points. Uh, as of right now, 80 miles an hour, a central pressure of 982 millibars. Here's what it looks like on visible. As you can see, it's trying to uh, form an eye, but it's very clouded over right now. It's not making very uh, much progress in terms of doing that. And so, yeah, uh, that's basically what uh, Cyclone Neville is up to right about now. If you want more on this system, please subscribe to Force 13 and stay tuned for more updates.